Greetings, welcome back to Astrologaster. Oh no, not you again! Okay, that's interesting. Fare you well? Most well, most well indeed, and I will tell you why. The conquering cherub has lately returned home to England. Ah, this being the voyage you did invest in. Aye, and what a sound investment it was, for it has paid off most handsomely. The I'm cherub glad. cargo of nutmeg and pepper will fetch a high price indeed. In sooth, as I recall, it was you who advised me on this investment, was it not? I thank ye heartily for it, sir. I am glad to have been of service, Dean Blag. Forsooth, my earnings have enabled me to make a substantial investment in Sir Walter Raleigh's expedition to the New World. Ah, methinks I've heard of this. Tis a quest to find the fable lost city of gold, is it not? Or as the Spanish call it, El Dorado? The very same. For it is said that El Dorado does lie deep within the rainforests of the southern parts of the New World, hiding vast quantities of gold and precious jewels. Hence, what I would have you tell me is, exactly how rich can I expect to be made from my investment? Oh, I see. not really. If I to be made very rich, I am afraid that news of my fabulous wealth may cause some jealousy among the clergy. News travels fast around the diocese, and I think it wise to get ahead of it if I can. Then let us consult the stars. What oh. will become of Thomas Blagg's investment in Sir Walter Raleigh's quest to find El Dorado? Okay, let's see. Blagg's in finances will bring him unhappiness. Blagg's business partners will be met with violence. No, no, no. The expedition will encounter foreigners who are stubborn, confi confident, and led by instinct. Yeah, that's true. There is cause for pessimism and a surprising reversal to save the life of lives of children. That makes no sense. God rewards exploration. Black will be able to leave his children a legacy of fine things. Now I go. I'll go with A. I have ill tidings for you, Dean Black. Raleigh and his men have been set upon by a tribe of angry New World natives. Angry natives? But, but surely the natives would greet us with much rejoicing. No. But do we not bring with us the gift of civilization? Would they not crave freedom from their tyrannical chieftains and cruel pagan gods? Well, it would seem these particular natives cannot be reasoned with, as they are led by instinct alone, and they will fight to the last man as it is not in their nature to surrender with honor, as Christian men would. What the truly? But, uh... Alas, I am afeard that Raleigh shall be forced to abandon his search for El Dorado, and your investment will come to naught. Hmm. I must own, sir, that I cannot share your uncharitable view of these savages. Uh, they may be heathens, but are they not still God's children? Um... I will now take my leave that you may engage in quiet reflection upon the spiritual dimensions of this question. Okay, and we'll see you later after you thank me. Mayhap I invest in tulip bulbs. I hear young merchants say such bulbs will one day replace silver as the new coin. What the hell is tulip bulb? Oh, okay, those are just tulips. <laughs> okay. Good morrow, sir, and well met. Indeed, it is I, Ricardo Ferraro, come once again to the great Dottore Simon Forman. Aye, and I can see why you are come. Methinks you are not well, Signor. The color of your face is quite alarming. Uh, it is because I am losing the blood. The blood does drain away from my face, away, way down on my body, and... Uh, what? Uh, you are bleeding.
bleeding from your fundament. Uh, how much have you been bleeding, and for how long? Un poco, not a too much. It does come and go. Sometimes a blood, sometimes no blood. You stop at the blood, see? Uh, mayhap I will, uh, but first I must consult the stars to find a diagnosis. What ails Signor Ricardo Ferraro? Which part is he bleeding from? The front one or the back one? I don't know what fundament means. I think it, I, it might be. Yeah, Senior Ferrer has hemorrhoids. This would be the back one. Which are swelling in anus and rectum. Blind hemor hemorrhoids cause pain, whereas open hemorrhoids are apt to bleed. Senior Ferrer suffers from jaundice. A blockage in Senior Ferrer's neck has caused Kohler to pull in his head, turning his face seal. What the fuck? No. What's that? There is nothing here to worry about, Senior Ferraro. Your body is merely purging itself of corrupted blood, in a similar manner to that which does occur in a woman's nethers each month. To wit, it is most healthsome and natural. Hmm. It's not. Are you sure? Are you sure? That is your final answer? Indeed it is. He's twisting my answer. It is the very latest medical thinking on the subject okay. of hemorrhoids. Now you are welcome to procure a second opinion, but I you, should. you will find that most doctors in London will tell you the same. Then Ricardo Ferraro bids you good day, Signor Foreman. You're welcome. Come on. Hmm. Textbook answer, but it is not hard for a common man to procure a medical book nowadays. Yeah. I forgot what times we were in. God damn it, she might not make it as a writer. Uh, You're querent, Signor Ferraro, scuttling away from me like a frightened rabbit. What have I ever done to upset the man? All I did was wish him buongiorno as I passed him at the door. Verily, Signor Ferraro's behavior does sound full strange. But let us not think of him, but of the matter that brings you hither, Mistress Lanier. How do you fare? I fare most well, in the main. For you spoke true when you said my collaboration with Mr. S. Good. It is going exceeding well. Verily, Dr. Foreman, I would be right content with my lot at present if it were not for the trouble I am come about this day. Pray, tell me of this trouble, madam. I am being proud. What? Often times in the night I see him following me home. Oh. One time he thinks I even caught him looking at me through my window. I would have you tell me who this prowling man might be. Signor Ferraro? Very worrisome. Can you describe this man to me? Nay, for it is always at night that I spy him, and I have always been too frightened for my eyes to linger upon him very long. Then let us see what light the stars can shed upon the identity of this man who hides himself in darkness. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. the man prowling Mistress Lanier? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> Ferraro. The prowler is a violent husband. What? The prowler hopes for a reversal of the ill luck he has had with Mistress Lanier. He harbors a misguided hope that she will perform her wifely duties and resume intimate relations. What the fuck? That's strange. Mistress Lanier is suffering mental confusion owing to her religious beliefs. She also harbors an unjustified level of mistrust towards protective romantic partners. The Pearl is a man of authority and a master of wit. Mistress Lionel considers him a friend. The Pearl harbors undeclared feelings for Mistress Lionel. Yeah, I think that's the right one. The star suggests that your Prowler is a man with a talent for wit. A man who secretly harbors amorous feelings towards you. Does that sound like anyone you know, madam? Dr. Foreman, I find your question most illogical. I cannot know of a man who harbours secret feelings for me, for indeed, if I were to know of them, the feelings would not be secret. Uh, yes, well, let me put it another way. Your friend, Mr. S, is the keen-witted man who furtively admires you. He is your prowler, madam. Mr. S is my prowler, you say? I bid you, sir, check the stars again. Is it not the most likely explanation, though, madam? I assure you, there is nothing likely about the unique relationship betwixt me and Mr. S. Indeed, he has too much respect for my literary mind to use me so ill. 
for his is a noble intellect that allows him to soar above the baser instincts of lesser men. No, it doesn't work like that, now, really. If you will not what judge the, the stars again for me, I will bid you good day, Dr. Foreman. I think my letter will cool down again a bit. Yep. Hey. Dolce! Rumors say next rally voyage is to put of gold in the rainbow. Hear ye! Reports have lately come in that Sir, Sir Walter Riley's expedition to the New World in search of El Dorado has been a colossal cluster fail. Despite Riley's assurances to the Queen that he would return with gold traded from the legendary city, it is said that Riley's ship bring back naught but potatoes. Experts predict Her Majesty's reaction to be somewhat tasty. Oh, I hope her husband didn't die. Good day, Dr. Foreman. But I am Mistress Delamere now. Mistress Delamere? Uh, but as I recall from my case notes... Uh, let me see now. It was three years past. Aye, uh, were you not hoping to marry a man named George Middleton? Oh, yes. I did marry Mr. Middleton. Sorry. But not long after we were wed, he fell to his death whilst taking the air atop a church belfry. Struck down by his abiding love of late gothic architecture. Oh. <laughs> there, there, my dear lady. How distressing your late husband's death must have been for you. I indeed, Dr. Foreman. So much so that my friends urge me to marry again, lest I die of grief. But now that I am once more a wife, I would not wish to be widowed anew. And John, John Delamere, my present husband, is also an older man. Dr. Foreman, you must tell me whether there be any illness he has, whether there be anything I might do mm -hmm. to save my dear sweet husband from an early death. Then let us see what the stars have to say. Is Mr. John Delamere troubled with any condition that may cause him to die? I have no idea. John Delamere does suffer from a cardiac passion. John Delamere has been bewitched. John Delamere is troubled with Quincy, a condition characterized by soreness in the throat. How am I? How the hell am I supposed to know? Uh, Delamere, okay. She did not say anything about I think he might have cardiac passion, although. How the hell am I supposed to know? All I know is his name. You know, this could be, you know... If there's possibility of death, but not... Uh, yeah, I'll go with that. Mr. Stelamere, the news is very grave. There's the possibility only! ...being under the spell of a witch. Know you of a woman in your husband's circle suspected of being a witch? A disgruntled sister left penniless by feudal inheritance laws, perchance? Mayhap a local cat enthusiast, or a Scottish neighbour. Nay, as true as I live, sir, I do not. Uh, but, but I will be sure to make inquiries. Good day, Dr. Foreman. You're welcome. Oh, no. Damn it. Tomorrow, Mistress Fortescue. How may I help you this day? I did lately experience feelings of a most strange and disturbing nature, for which I desire an explanation. Okay, go on. Prithee, describe these feelings to me, madam. When did they occur? Last eve. 
At a dinner party hosted by my dear friend, Mistress Emma Delamere. All was well at first, but soon after my arrival, I was stricken with a kind of madness. Madness, you say? Yes. Moments during which I found myself overcome with feelings of mirth, laughing most immoderately at the dullest of remarks made by other guests. At other times, I felt an unnatural fascination with the shape of the candelabra in the table centrepiece. And all the while, I was so ravenous with hunger, I quite absent-mindedly ate all the sweetmeats at my end of the table. I fear my rapaciousness did not escape the notice of guests seated beside me. Such an immoderate appetite is out of character for you, I take it. It could not have merely been occasioned by anxious passions. Why, nay, Dr. Foreman. Forsooth, I ought to have been very calm last eve. For I did spend the afternoon inhaling the fumes of an aromatic oil. A gift from my sweet husband, sent back from his explorations in the Near East. I did mention my husband, Captain Henry Fortescue, before, I think. Mm. He is a great friend of Sir Walter Raleigh. Oh, Henry and Sir Walter find the oil most relaxing, so he tells me. Yet you were not so very relaxed last eve, I take it. No, not in the least. For I fear a capricious spell was cast upon me. Over the course of the evening, I developed the strongest intuition that malignant forces were present in the room, and that I had been bewitched. Could it be true, Dr. Foreman? Might a witch have cast a spell on me? That is something we shall have to ask the stars, madam. Let us see. What was it that afflicted Mistress Sybil Fortescue last eve at dinner? Let's see. The current is trouble with melancholy and condition characters by literary anxiety and sadness. Well, who was that? The queen has been be the queen has been bewitched. Sybil Fortescue's trouble results from smoke inhalations. Yeah, I think that's it. Come on, pick it up. Now, madam, the oil your husband sent you. This was the first time you did inhale its fumes, methinks. Yes, the shipment of gifts from my husband did only lately arrive. Ah, then I think we have your answer. I have read some interesting tales of such oils and herbs of the Near East. It is said they occasion certain temperaments. To wit, an excessive sanguinity, which will have caused the immoderate laughter and increased appetite. They can also provoke a narrowing of the mind, which would explain your temporary fascination with the candelabra, and I believe the fumes of this oil may also have been responsible for the notion that you have been bewitched. And the men of the Near East gain pleasure from this oil? They would render themselves foolish on purpose? Aye, indeed. Foreigners have many strange customs and desires that we cannot hope to understand. How fascinating! I thank you for this explanation, sir. Indeed, it will make for a most diverting tale with which to regale guests at my next dinner. God give you good morrow, Dr. Foreman. You're welcome. We're nearly there. The second level of recommendation. <laughs> oh no. No. Ah, good day, Mistress Allen. I'm gonna slap her myself. Tremble like a leaf on an autumn day. I, for I'm most affrighted. But Mr. Allen says he thinks I worry over naught. So I am come to you, for methinks you would. Perchance you may help me. By my troth, I. Uh, pray tell me of this evil that have frightened you, madam, and I shall do all in my power to protect you from it. Yes, evil. Indeed, it is the very word for it. I have seen a dark figure prowling outside our house in the night, and once he. I saw him spying through my window. Who is he? What does he want from me? What am I to do? I don't know. I see. And you do not recognize his face or any other particulars? The color of his hair, for instance? Oh, nay, for it is always so dark. But by his silhouette, I can tell he is a bony, scrawny little man. The imp. Apparently. But your husband thinks tis naught to worry over, you say? Aye, he says the man is doubtless naught but a poor travelling tinker who is merely taking shelter in our garden. It would explain why his figure is so slight, to be sure, but, but, but what if he is not a tinker? What if his purpose is more sinister? Aye, indeed. Then let us consult the stars. Who is the man prowling outside the Allen's house in the night, 
And what is his How the hell am I supposed to know who he is? Okay, Avis is my must reign in her but what the hell? Not only does Avis have a deceptive nature, she's obsessed with farmers and has a preference for younger men. Avis risks being punished by God for her frequent comings and goings from her house. The Prowler is a mature intelligent man who is like a secret enemy of the Owens. The intimate relationship between Avis and I is changing. This represents sex, of course it does, okay. Uh, God's punishment, the grand possessions. Wait, what does mean? Hmm. Rain in her behavior. I think it's. I think I have no idea which way to go. Does Mr. Allen have any gambling debts, perchance? Old? Methinks I see it now. Ah, oh, tis you! The Prowler, tis oh. you! Me? <laughs> uh, really? Now, madam, what an outlandish notion. So you would deny it, that you have prowled and spied upon me these last months? Prithee, Avis, you've got it all. I will not have it. I am not a thing to be owned. I'm not one of your, your prized possessions. I'm pretty, madam. Put that down. Put it. Ah! Fine, madam. That was a priceless. a priceless Venetian vase. What happened? Okay. It was you. Good day, sir. How may I? By Jupiter! Can it be true? Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, Lord of Her Majesty's Privy Council, a hero of the Battle of Cadiz! Prithee, calm yourself, Sarah. Pray, treat me just as you would any other querent. Of course, as it okay. pleases your lordship. Uh, but may I say, what a great privilege it is to... Uh, may I offer you a... You are the man who had some success treating the plague some years past, are you not? Oh, indeed, my lord. You are very well informed. My strong water did save many a Londoner from a most lamentable death. Then perchance you might have some cunning cure for me as well. <laughs> I am returned to England upon having resolved that small matter in Spain. I find myself afflicted with the most vexing ailment. Oh, but your most glorious capture of the Spanish city of Cadiz was no small matter, my lord. All England talks of nothing else. Why, pamphlets recounting your heroic exploits are sold on every street corner in London. Mayhap they are. I know nothing of them. My single-handed victory against the King of Spain was but a trifling affair and the least I could do for my queen and a grateful nation. But I fear vast riches and the hearts of many a Spanish beauty were not the only things I did capture while I was there. Uh, what else did you capture in Spain? Oh. I fear I do not grasp your meaning. If you would kindly show me where upon your body you are... Ah. As you see, this Spanish disease I caught has me oozing a most disagreeable substance. Hmm. Methinks I have a fair idea of the nature of your affliction. Uh, but I must confirm the judgment with a reading of the stars. Uh, let us see. What disease troubles Robert Lord Devereux, the Earl of Essex? I don't think he wants to look at them. I don't think he wants to know. Robert Devereux is suffering from gonorrhea, a disease characterized by white matter running from the privy member and pain when passing urine. Robert Devereux is troubled with love. Robert Devereux is suffering from evil digestion. Now it's this. You have gonorrhea, my lord. It is a condition provoked by an increase in intimate activities. Too much strumpy humpy, eh? Well, it is true that since news of my victory got about, every wench from Southwark to Shoreditch wants a piece of my action, as it were. And how may this gonorrhea be cured? 
the most effective method is lead plate therapy. Usually this requires a man to lie in bed for many hours with a leaden plate positioned upon his privy parts, thus allowing the lead to impart its healing properties to the affected member. But, of course, men such as your lordship have no time to lie around in bed, which is why... Let me just fetch it from my cabinet. Which is why I invented this. And that is what? Some sort of wonder job? Like the ones old men used to wear? Precisely so, my lord. It is a codpiece that I had a blacksmith fashion out of lead. I invite your lordship to wear it under your breeches so that the lead may remain in contact with your privy member at all times. Indeed, until you are cured. <laughs> how very droll this is. Verily, how old-fashioned. I will appear as hung as old King Henry Tudor. Hmm. Mayhap I just wear it in my chambers. Good day. And all the time. Again. If you need anything, anything at all, I am at your service. Of course you are. Was most pleased and we are nearly got his letter of recommendation. Yes. I don't know you again. Davis, I did not expect to see you this evening. Do you bring news? I some very good news. At least if you confirm it for me. Me thinks I am with child. Okay. Oh, oh. How very wondrous. And, uh, have you any idea of who might- I verily, with child, but I dare not to. Forsooth, what if it be naught but false hope? Then let us ask the stars without delay. Maybe false hope? Is Mistress Avis Allen verily with child? I don't know. Oh my god. Evil angels are confusing Mistress Allen. Within a few months, it will become clear that she is not with a child. Mistress Allen is aging. This decreases her chances of being with a child. Mistress Allen's family thinks she is lazy. Damn. Mistress Allen is untrustworthy and creative when it comes to her marital duties. I should feel optimistic about the relationship between Avis and me. What the? Fuck? This makes no sense whatsoever. Mistress Allen is with child, but it will die, for she will experience some sudden bad luck and miscarriage. The father of Mistress Allen's unborn child is a strong young man that she's romantically involved with. Okay, let's see that, I guess. The stars confirm that you are indeed with child. She won't like it. That the father is... Oh, joy! Simon, is it not wondrous? You and I are to be blessed. I am not finished. The stars also reveal the identity of the father. There is no need to read the stars for that, for surely it is obvious that you... Prithee, admit it. You have been coupling with my manservant, William. Why, you... I warrant the stars say nothing of the sort. Uh, see here, in my chart. Tis plain as day. In the house of children, alongside Venus, there is the planet Mars. Who else but William could that be? But such scribblings of yours, they mean nothing to me. For all I know, you make up those stories about planets and houses and such. Why, verily, perchance you might draw up a new chart, Simon. One that tells of how the planet Avis is no longer in the house of Foreman. You would mock me, madam? You would make a jest of my... Oh, 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 I see. Leaving now, are you? Then you do so. You leave. I bid you good day. I don't really need her anymore. She gave me the letter of recommendation already, so... But I still need one more. Okay, with her. Okay, but that's gonna be it for today. Thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon.